Hello, and welcome back to Wild Discoveries. Today, we will be discussing methods of sampling animal behavior. My name is Angie Edkin, and I'm a graduate student at the University of Florida, studying animal science. And as you can tell from the photos, I am very passionate about both exotic and domestic equines, or really any animal with hooves and horns. My research at the University of Florida focuses on how the food we feed animals in a captive setting can influence an animal's health, behavior, and overall well-being. Before coming to graduate school, I was a zookeeper for seven years, and I took care of many animals, including reptiles, birds, hoofstock, and I've also participated in numerous behavioral research projects on animals such as a gold lion tamarin, Grevy's zebra, wildebeest, Sichuantakins, and even sable antelopes. And each study got me really excited about the impact that animal behavior can have on conservation biology. The more we learn about these endangered animals, the easier it will be to protect and save them. So just a brief review, in the last lecture, Jonathan from the Santa Fe Teaching Zoo talked about setting the stage for set studying animal behavior in a scientific setting. So just as a reminder, keep in mind that it's really important to think about the species you would like to study and the types of animal behavior you're also interested in studying, be it play behavior or sleep behavior or really anything in between. And once you've decided and identified the who and what of animal behavior, then you can decide the where and the when to study the animal behavior. Now at this point, you're very close to collecting animal behavior in a scientific setting, but you need to determine two more factors in the how you will collect the data. Now don't be intimidated. There's just two simple rules that I'll briefly discuss, and they're called the sampling rule and the recording rule. The sampling rule is one of my personal favorite parts about designing an animal behavior study because this is where you get to explore and decide which subjects or individuals you want to study. So for example, in a grubby zebra herd, would you like to study the males, the females, or perhaps newborn foals, because they're super cute? Or maybe you actually want to study all of them. So once you decide the individuals you want to study to help answer your scientific question, the next step is to decide where you want to do your behavior observations. Now this could be in an animal's natural or wild setting, or perhaps in a zoo, or even in your very own home. And the last step of rule number one is to decide the when you will study the animal's behavior. Once again, depending on what you are curious about learning from an animal, you may decide that it's best to observe the animals during migration, as shown here in the photo, or perhaps during breeding season, and is it best to observe the animals during the day, or at night, or maybe even 24 hours in a row using some cool infra infrared binoculars or uh, video cameras. So another key component of the sampling rule is determining the type of behavior sampling you will use. There are four general types of behavior sampling you can do. The first one is ad libitum. And that's just a fancy word for recording whatever behaviors you think are important in a random, non-uniform way. In fact, I often do this when I'm first learning about a species or during preliminary observations. You've probably actually done this in an informal way when you're watching animals at home or taking photos of zoo animals or your pets doing funny things. The second sampling technique is focal sampling. And this focuses on one animal for a specific amount of time while record recording all instances of the animal's behavior. The third sampling technique is called scan sampling. Now this technique is super important for those of you that are participating in collecting animal be behavior as one of our citizen scientists on the website. Because it's the type of sampling 
we will be using when observing animals with our wildlife cameras. When using scan sampling technique, one or more individuals in a group is scanned at regular intervals and their behavior is recorded. So I like to think of scan sampling as a quick snapshot of what an animal is doing and repeating this every 30 seconds for a set amount of time. And finally, the last type of sampling is called behavioral sampling, where the observer is watching and recording specific and often rare behavioral events only, like they're just interested in fighting or breeding behavior. The second rule is called the recording rule. Now, this rule may seem a little more boring than the first, so I'll keep it brief. But just know the take home message is that the recording rule is critical for collecting animal behavior in a scientific setting because it specifies how the behavior is recorded. You can choose to collect animal behavior in a continuous fashion where you record the exact time and duration behavior occurs over a set period of time. So for example, the zebra ate grass from minute one to minute three and then he started running and he ran from minute three to minute five and so on. The other type of recording behavior is time sampling. And this is the fun technique that you will be using if you choose to participate in collecting the animal behavior with our wildlife cameras as a citizen scientist on our website. Now, when using the time sampling method, an observer records animal behavior periodically in inter intervals, say 30 seconds or a minute. And you can use a stopwatch or your phone uh, or whatever timing device you would like to help you keep track of the time intervals. So our next lecture will focus on designing and implementing an ethogram. Thank you for your time.